Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 14. Last time we helped out some cryptozoologists, uh, Morel and Gary, only for us to come up with nothing unfortunately and we roamed the streets for a little while. We hung around until it was too late and then we were like, let's go to bed. Let's go to bed. We're waking up. It's a brand new day. We've made it to day four and we have a very beautiful yet sad theme playing um, this morning as we wake up in this little this little shack. We're going to ignore this thought as if you uh, if you guys witnessed the end of last episode. This thought is just endlessly looping on repeat, which is to uh, sort of pursue the thought of um, communism which is the one that we uh, pursued in our dream last night. Um, so I'm, ass I'm assuming it must be repeating or staying here in case for some reason you keep wanting to change your mind because uh, you do have the opportunity to bring it up and go, oh, no, actually, I don't want to do this. So I think that's why it's probably hanging around or it's a glitch, one of the two. Um, but we've committed to our ideals clean shaven, dressed for the occasion, and we're about to leave the shack and start today. Let's have a look and see what day four brings. We've got to go and meet Kim at the Whirling. No, we don't. Kim is already with us. <laughs> okay, so last night before we went to bed, we knocked on Kim's uh, room, knocked on his door, and we woke him up. He was actually there, even though his car was not there. His Kanima was not there. I don't know if that was an intentional or an oversight or anything. I assumed we'd have to waltz over there to say good morning. However, it seems that Kim is actually psychic uh, and is seemingly aware of our location at all times. That it means he's a good detective. He keeps tabs on us even when he has driven a body out of town. Is he knows exactly where we are. So there he is. Good morning, he says as he waits outside. And uh, let's see if he makes a comment on our lovely clean-shaven face. Let's have a chat to him. Because it's it's been a whole day pretty much without him. I've missed our sweet man. Yes. Okay. So point to your face. I shaved. Hold still a second. Try to smell Kim. Interesting. Okay. Uh, hold still a second. The lieutenant's posture becomes rigid and uncomfortable as you lean forward and sniff the area just above his shoulder blade. The lieutenant is fastidious as a cat in matters of his personal upkeep. And yet, in the folds of his jacket, you can just perceive the stale and acrid traces of oil rags, transmission fluid, and brake pads. Uh, have a bit of car trouble? Have a bit of car trouble on your way, Kim? Wait, wait. There's something else there. Something that sets your GABA receptors aflutter. GABA receptors? The Lieutenant's Aftershave, a common drugstore brand. Strong hints of pine needle. But what sort of ideological picture do these smells paint? Tough to say. Okay. Do you need something, detective? <laughs> you're no lieutenant, you're a mechanic. I was just wondering what brand of aftershave you use. It's nothing fancy, just plain old Tiger Super Special. I do like the way it tingles, though. It's the only part of shaving I actually look forward to. <laughs> was there something else you wish to discuss? Well... I shaved. Yes. Uh, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps... Uh... <laughs> what is it? You can tell me, Kim. I'm not really sure about this turn of events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. They sort of seem to cover up some of the... Cover up some of the... The what? This handsome ruggedness? Damage. Okay. Damage. Either way, good in you. You are saying? <laughs> he doesn't care. Okay. I wonder if we can convince him there's a sexy dark mystery to this case at this point. Maybe we can because we discovered the bullet. Hmm. 
And there's something else we actually need to do today as well. There's something, something else we need to do today. Um, and it's actually very long overdue. And it's something that I forgot about, was reminded about, forgot about again, and have remembered now while playing uh, to, a, to address it. Now, many years ago, we dug through the trash and we pulled out our ledger. Okay, we pulled out our ledger of failure and hatred. Now, there's a lot of other cases and things in this ledger that we haven't actually interacted with yet. Because I remember when we first got it, we read over a couple of things and we said, Oh, we'll do the rest later because there's a lot here. And then we just forgot about it um, because it's just, it's just one of those things. Um, I know that reading does pass the time, however. So I do just want to address the fact that I remember that it's here. Uh, and I do want to interact with it. Um, maybe would have been a good idea to do last night uh, while it was at that maximum time frame. Uh, but we have daylight to burn today. So I don't want to read it right at the beginning. Uh, but we will check through uh, the ledger. Uh, however, I would like to interact with our evidence again, the fractured bullet, because Kim is back with us now, so we should be able to interact with this one uh, with him by our side, uh, as there was a comment made about it last time that it would be good to have him with us when we look it over. So let's interact with it now that Kim's with us. And then maybe I might put a point into Inland Empire and see if the percentage has increased to convince him that there's a sexy dark mystery, considering the bullet. The bullet is still safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. There it is. So, Kim, take a look at this. It's a jacketed bullet close to 5mm in diameter. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military-grade breech-loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. We were right. This came from a serious weapon. Highly unusual. The people of Revachol haven't carried breech-loading weapons like this for nearly half a century. Is it possible? Hmm. Well, this is the interesting thing. We know that the Hardy Boys were involved in the hanging but it really does feel like, with discovering the bullet, it has an entirely new perspective on the case. That it feels like the hanging is a is a cover up. Um, could they have potentially discovered the dead body and sort of concocted a way to make it look the way that it looks now? If there's a serious weapon that did this damage that is not really around Revachol, could it potentially be a bullet from uh, the weapon of the victim? Uh, as they, you know, these hired guns with their potential weaponry, could it have been a self-inflicted wound? Could it have been a, uh, that the Hardy Boys or someone else obtained his weapon? to deal that damage to him could it have been done by one of the other mercenaries like but the thing is i can i can throw out some so, these sort of like plot threads and questions um but then we have moments like last episode where we encountered gary the crypto fascist and he was connected to the crime scene more than i ever would have expected i didn't expect any connection whatsoever to the crime scene however not only did he steal um armor he tampered with the crime scene and is like has his little weasel hut right nearby as well so it's i can theorize as much as possible that it seems like there's you know a sexy dark mystery to this case <laughs> so it, there's gonna be something else that I, even i can't think of but uh, we'll have to figure it out even the rcm uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets this is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. He likes it. Something tells you that won't be any time soon. 
This will have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while. Okay. However, try to determine what type of weapon shot this. 92% have a similar rifle on hand, aware of the name of the antique rifle you found, and Encyclopedia said this came from a breech loader. Those are some good pluses that have gone into this bullet. A rifle. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique. God, I fucking, I love how stuff that we have done throughout the game, even tiny things seemingly disconnected in form serious choices later it's so cool that like we've just been like we've just been exploring we found a little weapons bunker we picked up this gun not only did we pick it up but we also found out what type of gun it was based on just interacting with people and we get to a point where something serious is related to the case and it's like oh all this knowledge that i thought was just like supplementary and sort of bonus stuff um has allowed us to have a very high chance at figuring out something related to the case, and that is really cool. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belma Grave Rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian Theater of the Anti-Centennial Revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you, the dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Okay. Is anyone still making these rifles? No, but Zeliga, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Okay. And now with this information in mind, see, this is why I like to voice things as they come into my head because then new information can change that. Is at the time I was like, oh, it could be the mercenaries' weapons. It could have been something else. But considering we now have identified that the weapon came from something much older, I don't think you'd see those mercenaries um, rocking old weaponry that have something a little more modernized. So that then flips it again with, okay, so seemingly not a wound inflicted by the the victim's weaponry or other mercenaries um someone that likes you know maybe collecting old firearms maybe people that have like a, a connection to the past um we got questions and we need to find some answers who uses bell margrave rifles these days antiques enthusiasts guerrilla fighters in distant countries a few lucky jamrock bangers you're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache, only in working order. Okay. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? I think I know where this came from. Okay. And? The shot probably came from a Bell Margrave rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech-loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Ravachol, really. That's probably a good thing. I have to hand it to the monarchs. It's quite admirable that they took the advice of criminologists last century and banned the use of breech loaders in peacetime. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Prohibiting peacetime law enforcement to front loaded rifles is a policy enforced by the Moralist International in all the nations of the Real Belt. Worth what? Getting shot? Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. I, uh, I'm not saying it, but are we thinking it? I think we're thinking it. But back to the investigation. Imagine if everyone had access to firearms. Is that, is that such a good thing? Okay, seems we're looking for an antiques enthusiast. Could the victim have been mixed up with some foreign guerrilla fighters? Have well-armed jamrock bangers started crossing over into Martinez? Yes, yeah, something mysterious is afoot with this antique bullet type. Well, that's the thing. So we've been given a few options. 
this these seem maybe likely i'm gonna go for number one seems like we're looking for an antiques enthusiast doesn't seem that likely but we'll check out all possible leads next step finding the gun itself all righty the bullet has nothing more to say but there you go was good to bring it up with kim and kim is finally with us in the in the fishing shacks which is which is cool so he'll uh he gets to see my neck of the woods now because i i do be living here waves are beginning to die down look at those little bastards simmer down simmer down bastards why does she care about the waves so much what is it with you and those waves what is it with waves and fishermen we need to be out there with them, fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. <laughs> but until that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. So what will it be, officer? <laughs> Kim's presence makes it awkward. There you go. There's a, there's a negative of Kim's presence in the fishing shack is suggesting that Lillian go on a date with us. Go on a date with another drunk. Uh, we do have... This is re-highlighted again to say I'm looking for someone else. Oh? Who? Oh, only for it to not be updated with anyone else. That's okay. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Apparently we can talk about that motor carriage. I feel like that's going to give us a even another minus to suggesting a date. Um, and then we, we still have the, the envelope situation with Evra. How we're thinking we're going to get the the drunks to sign it so we'll uh we'll see we'll see what happens there i love that connection of kim's presence makes it awkward <laughs> well kim's back with us now he needs to he needs to get used to he needs to get used to it our tenant the police. i hope the waves don't keep you up at night what can i help you with I really don't know how to fix this sound glitch that keeps happening. Um, genuinely, I may just try and uninstall and reinstall the game at this point, but it's weird that there's some points where I start a conversation with someone and the, the audio the audio struggles at the start. Like, it just stutters everything. It's kind of weird. Uh, it's And it's inconsistent as well. I don't know when, uh, when it happens or how it's going to happen. Now, we have to go check in with the cryptozoologists. I believe they will be at the Whirling because we put them on we put them on break. So I don't expect that they would have returned to their traps this morning. Uh, we'll check out the we'll check out the church and we'll check out more of this area with uh, with Kim. Now that he, now that he's here, I'll just quickly collect this tear. I think it might be a good idea to start the day off strong. Um, I think it might be a good idea to start the day off strong. So if we head back to the Whirling, what we can do is we can check in with the cryptozoologists. Um, and then what we can do is we can uh, interview the sexual assault victim. Um, because Kim's reunited with us. Um, and then we can we can get back to some of the extracurricular um, activities. We'll come back over... We'll come back over this side with uh, with Kim. I think that's a that's a good way to start it. I'm trying to get rid a circle around my head won't disappear. <laughs> there we go. Usually when I right click it disappears, but it was just hanging around for a while. Oh Kim, did you see this motor carriage? By the way, <laughs> pretty cool, huh? We can't investigate it, so I wonder if, um, obviously this scene would have played out differently if Kim was here at the start, but... Yes? Just wondering if there was a, uh, a dialogue choice that would, that would pop up. What's our Inland Empire? It's currently at five. Hmm. Just going like, hmm, do I want to, uh, do I want to put a point into Inland Empire to see if I can convince Kim that there's a sexy mystery to the case? Who knows? 
I'm trying to figure out how to get back. I've forgotten. Let me get back. Over here. Let's head back over the water lock. Oh! Kim got stuck. Now, is his motor carriage back? That's the true question. <gasps> oh, hello. So the motor carriage is back, see? So it wasn't back last night, so I thought Kim would have still been out of town and come back tomorrow. However, we, able, we were able to disturb him at his door, which is the weird part. But his car is back, and we have someone with a fuck the world jacket, and another one that says piss something. But they are investigating your vehicle, Kim. We've never seen these ones before, these gentlemen. Let's have a look at these. Let's talk to the anarchists. That's one brutal motor carriage. Ah, uh, okay. That's one brutal motor carriage, says the young man with piss written on his back. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. His companion wears a simple yet elegant slogan. Fuck the world. A snazzy, shit-ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops' heads. Scary tribal shit. Okay. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. Ahem. <clears throat> While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. Yeah, Kim. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or skulls. Okay. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and... On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. Yeah, I was wondering where I'd heard skulls before. We've got Cindy the skull. Who are the skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? An amnesia cop. It's not a question. Don't get into it. I'm so glad you I'm so glad you asked. The question was rhetorical. The skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertne. Besmertne. Besmertine. Or the Besmati, the Immortals, are West River Sholian crime syndicates. Okay. The Besmati. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck all swagger, infamous for their non verbal modus operandi. Non verbal? If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual, a testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock, or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. <laughs> wretched aggressive. No, they really, really aren't. It's porno tuning. Say no to the porno. <laughs> Do you guys know Cindy the Skull? Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. The young man's eyes glaze over, his voice filled with longing. Yeah, a true artist of the future. Just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. Returning from whatever void he was just visiting, someone's got a crush. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. 
And now because we've spoken to the rave kids in the tent, minus Noid, who we still need to speak to, we can point out, I see you kids are into anodic dance music because of Arno. Oh man, yeah! We're not fucking kids, man! <laughs> Be wary of the abyss. His blonde friend adds ominously and points to his temple. Why? Probably because of how non-verbal their mode of operation is going to be. It's a threat. A threat? Good. I like those. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Kim! Hey, uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. Stay light, man. Yeah. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? Why aren't there more skulls in Martinez? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Apart from the Unions themselves, of course. That's what I was gonna say, Spirit to Court. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Bruh. Yeah, we are. These fucking kids need their skulls bashed in. A good old BOONK! Bash the tree heads together. <laughs> Do a soft reset. Your rhetoric is confusing. Are you part of the skulls or not? We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance <coughs> to join them. And what makes you think the organization would accept you? Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. But in a non-threatening and definitely legal way <laughs> we'll fuck the system from the inside later just be cool now the damage will be tenfold okay right on fuck so what's happening now enough about this scullery then mm -hmm. do you know anything about the murder that took place here murder a man was hanged in the backyard of the whirling and rags yeah Sure, we'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> it was a man. Wow. Also, he was hanged. Wow. Anything else? He was hanged from a tree. What? Yeah, I mean, duh. You have been so revolutionary in my case today, gentlemen. These punks don't know anything. Let's just move along. Kim's angry today. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? Kim's moody probably because we woke him up late at night and he didn't get a good sleep. Oh, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. I know, you, I know that you don't know shit. Exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind a hostel? What if it's art? Or just a mere specter? Oh man, I would like to take the silly option. But with the way that we've been taking the conversation, it feels so out of left field. It also feels like highly inappropriate, but I- but... Harry is highly inappropriate, is he not? That could be the case, yes. A brilliant work of art. No reply. The blonde rebel scratches his chin. I knew that. I, I knew. His gaze on anything. <laughs> he looks very uncomfortable. Okay, I didn't get to read any of that because it just skips right to, to Kim. But I, I knew that Kim was going to respond not nicely. <laughs> What's with the jackets? What about them? Why does your jacket has have piss f written on it? Well, first off. It's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. I do like piss. <laughs> the word piss epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, You've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. Uh, what? 
What I mean by this is we are all pissed and that the world is inherently meaningless. Okay. It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field, even if it's rather narrow. <laughs> Turn to the dark-haired youth. Why do you have fuck the world written on your jacket? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one, for so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket, or are they derived from something else entirely? <laughs> to catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times, and even then it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... That is a terrible metaphor. You get more fish in a shorter time. And for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly. One must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Okay. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. <laughs> Sticking your dick into the void. Spoken like a true poet. What a wordsmith. Hate to admit it, but in a weird way, he's got a point. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Hey, Kim. Yes? Do you think it's a coincidence? Why it is? There are two of us and two of these jackets. What are you implying? Which one would you wear? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Are you more of a piss f or a fuck the world kind of guy? Neither. Come on, Kim, it's just a mental exercise. Fine, if only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think piss is the stronger of the two statements. That works. I feel like more of a fuck the world kind of guy. Seems about right, especially considering your heroic exit attempts. <laughs> is he referencing when I ran away from God? That's an origin story for a dynamic duo right there. So are we done here? Or you don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? Oh shit, okay, hang on. This is a half-light check. Ask for the jackets for yourself and the lieutenant. Demonstrated authority and saying that they're just off-brand skulls. Oh dude, okay, hang on. I'm gonna leave, because it's a red check. And if it's a red check, I need to make sure I do this right. I'm gonna get some jackets. Let's increase half-light, which is currently at plus one. Um... I need to... We can't in interact with this. Interestingly enough, this even wasn't an option to address with, with Kim. This is like one of my regrets from exploring the Fisherman Shack without Kim. Obviously, I can't predict this, or I told you, Gary was the least uh, sus suspicious to me of being connected to the crime scene, let alone carrying some of the military equipment. So I'm wondering if there will be a way for me to address this one with Kim. Maybe not, uh, but we can use the car radio again because it is a task to follow up on the boots at least, so we might be able to bring up the this one. We'll see. We'll see. Now, in terms of everything else, I can also maybe drink some... I could drink some beer. <laughs> uh, I could I could drink drink some alcohol right now. Early in the morning, uh, let's see, uses left seven. Fuck it. Let's also, let's also increase the physique here. We're gonna, we're gonna put some, um, hang on. I keep forgetting how to use items. I keep forgetting how to use it. It's in my hand. Ah, oh, there we go. The icon just wasn't there for some reason. So it, it is here. So we click on it. Physique raised. Mm -mm -mm. Little bit less morale, but, but that's okay because we have so many heals that I will just heal it right now. Okay. Our half light is now at five. That ride is fucking lightning. Hey. Piss 
Look who it is. Shrunken cophead material. Shrunken cophead material. All right, 72% I feel good about. There's still a chance to fail it though. That's the problem. There is still a chance to fail it. That I There's part of me that almost wants to put another level into Half-Light. 72%. It's a good morning to drink a beer and ask for someone's clothing. No, no, no. Don't ask anything. Be subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skulls. Use that. Okay. We want to make sure that these boys stay on the path and they don't go off into anarchy and being skulls and stabbing people in the street, all right? We want to make sure that these boys have a future that doesn't end at someone else's bullet entering their body. You know what I mean? Wait, how? Suggest their massive skulls. Come on. Boys, with those jackets, you're going to be the skull kings in no time. What? No. Skulls don't have kings. I think... And we're not even in yet. Yeah, man, keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Got them. Prospect must be a hierarchical term. Probably in the lower end. Not even prospects and already aspiring to be kings? Wow, you boys are ambitious. Only prospects and already planning a coup in the skulls. You are destined to go far. I love that Kim's actually chiming in with this one as well. He gets it. Passive aggressive flattery. Me and Kim, you know. Good good partner to have. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> are you trying to get us killed? No, I'm trying to get your jackets. Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Yes! We want to be a cool killer skulls too like you guys, but we don't have skull jackets! Please be quiet. What? What do you want? The, the jackets? You got it. No need for cruelty. You got it? No need for cruelty. Okay. You offer us your jackets like that? It'd be impolite to refuse. Reach out your hands. Oh, man. Okay. I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans anyway. This was stupid. Fuck. We got jackets. <laughs> the lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild amusement. Since, and then turn to Kim. Since you said you're more of a piss for a kind of guy, I'll take the other one. I'm absolutely okay with not having either <laughs> one. Thank you. Don't you want to express your individuality? Why not? They're a pair. We could really raise hell. Go undercover. Hard. This case doesn't require us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jackets will be useful at all. I just wanted them to not have them anymore. Okay, I get it. Cold-hearted cop. Still, it's good to know we have a pair in case the need arises. The need will not arise. <laughs> it might. The jackets are meant to complete each other. If a man was standing alone on a street corner with piss written on his back, it'd just be an individual <laughs> that has taken a liking to you, right? And fuck the world all on its own is, frankly, generic. Exactly, Kim. Two peas in a pod. Uh... I don't know, Eric. It's cold out. Yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. There we go. We got two jackets. We've we've quelled the anarchy. Leather jacket. Piss fuck. Plus one drama. No fucks given. And wait, I'm a detective? Minus one authority. A leather jacket that quite recently belonged to a young man who possessed some intimate knowledge of the human condition. It has his nom de guerre written on the back. It's quite a statement. Half plus one half light, darkening world, and minus one rhetoric, inelegant statement. A leather jacket that quite recently belonged to a hoodlum who understood love for what it really is. It has the hoodlum's nom de guerre written on the back. It's quite a statement. We got some new fashion. That's fucking great. <laughs> That's so good. 
That's quite a that's quite an outfit for today. <laughs> that was cool. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Um yeah, I'll use the I'll use the car radio. I'll use the car radio in a sec. Um Okay, the woman is on the balcony. Into the whirling we go. Into the whirling we go. Okay. Hardy boys are back. Smokers there. Hey, these guys are still here. And there's our cryptozoology friends. Wait. No. Something about this bunch doesn't smell right. The Hardy boys? Aren't they Everett's guys? They are. But they don't seem too keen to talk with you. Do they? No, they don't. Glenn seems to be contemplating grievous bodily harm while he massages his raw knuckles. In the far back, Eugene is doing his best to ignore you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fat Angus keeps shooting you furtive glances and mumbling uneasily to himself. And from his perch at the end of the table, Titus Hardy himself stares at you with a cold contempt. That makes you want to leave the cafeteria straight away. Mmm. Okay. Besides, you're pretty sure they consider themselves social democrats. Alright, guess I'll look elsewhere then. Interesting. Okay, we've got our cryptozoologist fam hanging out here with, with Gart. Cool. Alright. I'm going to actually take a look at this sound issue that I'm having at the moment. I might just I'm gonna save the game I'm gonna save the game uh, and then I'm going to reinstall the game and hopefully that might fix the sound thing uh, that's the only thing that I can think of so I'm gonna try and fix that because it's it is bugging me and we'll see if that fixes my problem okay I have fixed the issue maybe we'll just have to wait and see uh, so we're back I think that the probably the best thing to do is speak to our cryptozoologists first. We'll speak to Morel, and then we'll uh, we'll check in with everybody else. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Talk to her. All right. Well, we were supposed to check in with Morel about the trap, but apparently he doesn't want to hear about it. We'll speak to Lena instead. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. <laughs> I'm basically also a cryptozoologist now. I knew it. <laughs> you hear Kim say quietly to himself, right, because now Kim's going to get the update on this. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's already getting out of hand. Well, in that case, sweetie... Let me give you a small token of my gratitude. Mm -hmm. It's a tie, mask in origin. The pin is an antique, quite special to the cryptozoological community. Hell yeah. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. You could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid, but the phasmid, of course, is more important. Right, because now it's our time to be like, hey, you never told me you've seen the phasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. It's too late now. We're too far gone. We've we've done we've, we've done so much cryptozoology. Ramblings? Nonsense. Your description of the phasmid is the most precise I've ever heard. But darling, I didn't even get the size of it right. <laughs> you were a child, my dear. Really? It's extraordinary what you were able to describe. Now go on, tell our friend about it. He's proven his interest in the field. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Reflexively, huh? Kim's pulling out the notebook, hey? Okay, bit of a bit, bit of a uh, you know feigned interest there, my friend. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds quite a tall one many times my height i remember when all of a sudden wait 
When was this and how old were you? Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Bettencourt in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. She'd just started forming memories. Real memories. Not the billowy haze of infanthood. Gaining sentience. What happened? The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. Damn, so this this phasmid is like her entire life. She had no fear, just surprise. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee deep in mud, looking around me. Where did you go? Don't go. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys, that sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on a date. Can you imagine? She tells me a story, and it's the most detailed report of the Insulindian phasmid I've ever heard. The sounds. She told me it hissed. So that's how they met. This is beyond significant for them. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not only like her life, but also her marriage. It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. And this is everything to them. The way it moved, the colour, how some of its limbs were white, like marble. It matched perfectly with what I know from other accounts. It was amazing. Dude, if there's, if there's no discovery of this phasmid in this game, and if it turns out that it's not even real, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> like, god damn it. I want, I want it to be real so bad. If it weren't for Lena, I might have given up hope years ago. It's no exaggeration to say that she restored my faith in my profession. He looks at her with admiration for getting a wild smile on his face. You were on a date. Our first, yes. Its limbs are white? Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported, along with beige, where the camouflage ends. How big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. Kim, what do you think of this? I thought it was a wonderful story, man. He closes his notes and gives her a simple smile. But I don't believe it. A child left unattended on a warm day. Children make up stories and then end up believing them. Thank you for sharing this with me. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... <sighs> such an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. And she could get up and walk right into the reeds on her own. Into the mud. Anywhere. That's all for now. Okay, now I wonder if we could speak to Morel about the traps. <laughs> Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? Gives you a gruff pat on the shoulder. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial, but inside. This man is itching for some news on those traps. Hell yeah, he is. So I checked all the traps. Good. Okay. And? And one of them was empty. Completely empty? The cryptozoologist's eyes grew wide. Surprise. 
tempered with fear and trepidation. He doesn't know what to think yet. Maybe you're joking? Yes, there was nothing in the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... The empty trap was the one at your campsite. Maybe this factors into it somehow? I definitely left that one stocked. Hmm. Right from the campsite? Just means the Insul Indian Phasmid is even more clever than we thought. Uh, I feel like it might have been tampered with. I want to believe it as much as you guys do. She's engaging in a well-known self-deception called motivated reasoning. You should correct them. It's so, it's so upsetting to me in a way that like. Almost every single time our brain chimes in in the cryptozoology conversations, it's always about tell them it's not real and, and it's ah, it's just like I want it to be real so bad, and I think that's the struggle of it. It's so magical and wonderful, and it you can tell it means so much to these characters, these people. You know, like this feels like a very there are people in real life that dedicate their whole entire life to these things, and for just like me, someone that they've only just met like a few days ago, to just like try and bring that all down feels so terrible you know when it's the it's lena's whole life it's the reason they're together and then since they've been together it's been their whole life uh, like i want it to be real so bad i feel for them in that regard but our brain keeps chiming in and being like mm, just correct them maybe you're imagining it it's not real of course more clever him. You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. It might behove you to tread lightly. Exactly. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news. Though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Like, there is nothing to be gained personally from coming into these people's lives and trying to pick apart and break down their life's work and, and passion, you know? Nothing to be gained for me, everything to be lost for them, you know? Like... Another trip to the reeds. But then with Gary chiming in here being like, oh no, another, like, not very happy about it, another trip to the reeds, I don't think he would be the one to potentially tamper with the trap because... I think he'd be the one out of everyone that would be like the least excited to go back into the field, it seems. He doesn't seem too happy about it. It's not very scientific to reason backward from a conclusion you want to be true. That's exactly what it is. What a deft hunter, the phasmid. I don't know. I'm not persuaded. Are you sure you've exhausted all the alternative explanations? I might go with that one. Of course we have. Wait, Morel. He may have a point. We have an obligation to rule out other hypotheses. You're right, dear. It's a fair point. But what other explanation could there be? He turns to me. Pardon me. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news, too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol is yours. Cryptozoologique is your ever sure is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? It doesn't feel like closure. I do want to know what happened, whether it's tampering or genuine phasmid activity. Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Well, that's what I was thinking. Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Kim, you missed a whole chapter of this, okay? Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Oh. When did I insult him? 
Obviously, I, mu- I must have picked something that offended him at, at some point in the conversation, especially maybe when we first met. Something up with the trap and considered alternatives brings this to a 58%, and we can retry it. Uh, I'm going to put on my interfacing gloves, however, just to start it off strong before I have to, uh, you know, maybe put another level into it. While I'm here, let's have a look at this. Eight-eyed Terratorn tie. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Octuple Vision, Inland Empire, and Volition, Cryptid's Protection. A slender bolo tie held together by an antique clasp in the shape of a bird skull. The skull features eight cavities for eyes. It's disturbing, but you can't look away. So we take away our plus one shivers and our minus two physical instrument for that one. It looks awesome. That's sick. Now I just need a cowboy hat. All right. Uh, interfacing has been leveled up once. Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. All right. Develop an alternative theory about the missing locusts. hi pacha Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. Okay. I see what they're going for, where it could have been the kids that were nearby. But it was so late at night that they were in bed. But the time of day may not factor into this encounter. It might just be the same whether we did this during the day or not, but we'll see. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. Oh. I really think that Kuno would have crossed the water lock at night and fucked around with some locusts specifically. I mean... Okay. That's not what I would have gone for. But Logic has pulled Kuno out of the hat. I think a little hooligan called Kuno may have stolen the locusts. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bags? Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents. My favorite. It doesn't sound like it's really his favorite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. I'm so invested, dude. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play Suzerainity, but no more field trips for me. So they'll all be at his place. I wonder how they feel about his decor. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Ooh, okay. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play suzerain tea, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun, really. But I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. He's, so he, this is the game is like this is your last chance to talk to Gary. No, no, no need to apologize, Gary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. Disappointment. Did you know Gary was hiding the armor? Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. I don't know what got into him, officer. Thank you for letting him off easy. He won't forget it. We'll make sure he won't. Should have fined the bastard. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to Gary. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. Yellow man! I mean, officer. I cannot believe, I cannot believe that he just said that. Jesus fucking Christ, that took me off guard. You were surprised to see my colleague, Lieutenant Kitsuragi? Not many sealites here, Shit, or anywhere, man. other than sail. Fuck. I meant no offense, truly. Do you remember how, when we met Measure Hat and I said the next racist will be a really good one? 
Kim, you're very, you're, you're very perceptive. He's psychic. Um, yes. Well, this is that racist. He gestures towards Gary as though he were presenting a work of art. Yes, our lucky racist. Will you grant us three wishes, Gary? Are you, are you Gary? Are you a racist? Oh man, we've got some, we've got some questions here. There's a problem when this game gives you so many good dialogue options when you feel like you're in a situation where I think you're in, I can only choose one at the time. Hmm. I'm just going to... I'll go with the, f the first one. Yes, our lucky racist. Hey, man. All I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. I'm just stating a fact. But then he was saying that the next racist would be a really good one, and our lucky racist, who also turns out to be tied to the crime scene, you know? The lieutenant is a native of Revishol. Oh, yes. Of course he is. I was just speaking about his... connections. Let's change the subject. He flashes okay. an impenetrable smile. We can we can actually pursue it again. Not many Seolites... Do you remember how, when we met... Me well... So I want to check the other options. Will you grant us three wishes, Gary? Hey, man. All I meant was there are not okay. many Seolites around here. I'm just stating a fact. So that goes into the same thing again. Do you have a problem with Seolites? No. No problem at all. Okay. So it seems to be a closed loop. It doesn't go to any different Not many... Do you remember how... Things. We, well, this is... Hey, man. All yeah. I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. I'm j Oh, yes. Not many... Do you remember... I'm just checking we, each well, one. This is that racist. I don't know if I'll go for those, but yeah, okay. It just is a closed loop then. Hey, man. All I'm. Oh, okay. yes. So, our last opportunity to talk to Gary, and how good. <laughs> I guess maybe our last chance to talk to Gary thing here is if we hadn't discovered he had the armor last night, this is our last chance to discover he had the armor today, maybe by retrying a check or something. I feel like that's the point that they were going for, which almost makes me wish that that was the case because then I'd be able to discover it with Kim. Yes. Because I can't tell Kim, hey, by the way, I have the body armor. It would be really nice if I could, but that's okay. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. I okay. We'll, uh, we need to check in with Kuno, apparently. Um, I wonder if these two have something new on a new day as well. Yes? What is it? No. But they're still here. I can't believe this shit. He might be wearing a disguise. Cool shades. Are you wearing a disguise? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. He looks at you inquisitively. As if waiting for some kind of reaction or response. Something to click. It's not happening, though. Who is this guy? I guess we'll wait. We'll get there. We'll get there with this guy. We'll also get there with the smoker and figure out what's up with the smoker once we get that check sorted out as well. And this door... We still can't open, can we? We still door with. Can't I just sweet talk the door open like I sweet talked the container open? Maybe. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna pursue the plot thread with the cryptozoologist first, and we're gonna run around the back and talk to Kuno before we get into a most likely in-depth interview with our woman upstairs. Fuck does Kuno know about locusts? Kuno saw you wield that can. Sweet graffito action pig. Kuno likes that delinquent shit. Oh, Kuno saw us doing the graffito on the wall yesterday. <coughs> we can either be sincere or be cool with it. I'm I'm hip and down with the youth. Pop is bad to the bone, Kuno. Rotten to the core. Kuno's pies. You're just shit at life. Oh. 
Now, what's your case with Kuno? Ooh. Him seeing us find the bullet bumped that up to 58% to figure out what's going on with this kid. Nice. Okay. You wouldn't happen to know anything about any missing locusts? No. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. <laughs> so he knows locusts are bugs. Oh my god, I told you that shit is name! Shut up, C. Mm -hmm. Now they're gonna take you to lame prison! She sounds like she's about to cry, out of disappointment at Kuno's newfound lameness. What's this about? Deny everything, Kuno. You need to lawyer up. Kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer present. Oh my god. Lame. That rings some bells. Could this be connected to Night City, a.k.a. the City of Rage? The City of Rage. Yeah, that's pretty lame. Sounds like art. Kuno, is this about Rage City? Oh god, Kuno, no! It's gonna happen now! They're gonna make you lame! Stop it, see? No one's gonna make anyone lame. Kuno's got this under control. There's definitely something going on here. You should check out Kuno's shack, the one with the pig's head. Ah, reaction speed, okay. Now, I there's a lot of stuff that I have not pursued with Kuno, because he's like the final boss of this game. <laughs> I've held off. Empathy, 58%. I reckon... Kuno doesn't fucking care. I reckon I, I can increase my empathy, I believe, um, with some stuff here. That's a minus one. Our empathy is current. Oh, our empathy is already at a plus two. It's already up. Um, I think we may already be wearing it. That's a minus one. We may already have our maximum empathy increased by with our clothing. Yes, we do. Okay, so we'll tr we can try it. Oh, we can try it, and then we can just level it up if we fail. Necromancer pig, that shit was dark. Going in there like that. Oh, brutal shit. Tell me, <laughs> Kuno dies. You're gonna pick one out of his brain like that too? Kuno's gonna go out in a hail of bullets. <laughs> gonna look like a fucking porcupine. Okay. Porta Rosa, a side alley of the Boogie Street Spearhead. A young man in his early twenties approaches patrol officer Emil Mullins and asks for a cigarette. As Officer Mullins reaches in his coat pocket for the pack of Astra he just purchased this morning, the man shoots him point blank in his chest. Breathless, the patrol officer collapses in the gutter. His right hand is grabbing the armor on his chest. The bullet didn't pierce it, but he can't breathe. On the pavement, the patter of the perpetrator's feet growing distant. This is one hell of a thought to come in after this. Bleed, pig. Someone opens a window and says, but Emil cannot see who. His sight grows dim with pain. Part of me feels like this may be an attempt to get him to loosen up a bit, but I feel like he'll deflect if I, if I say this, and he'll be like... He'll call me a slur. Let's... Let's... Let's indulge it. I'll be there for you, Kuno. Yeah. Oh, okay. He actually went with it. Interesting. There's a dreamy look in his eyes. I, I thought he was going to push back on that. Alright. It's a legendary empathy check. But he saw us find the bullet, so we've got a 58%. It's an even chance. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Ooh. We're doing we're doing some good rolls today. I mean they're all high percentages, but it feels good to be in a lot of green. Uh, act on it. Try and separate them. Okay. Interesting. How? Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. True. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, mm. afraid for her life, like she's done something. Something very bad. That's true. She always just shouting behind the fence there. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you mm. about his name. 
Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Kuno S is the true final boss. Kuno is just the one right before it. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. You must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Okay. Throw a rock at Kuno S. It's the only answer. Act on it. Try and separate them. Kuno! Psst. Fuck you, whispering about. He whispers back. <laughs> He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Kuno S is going to be like, Fuck are you guys talking about? You're leaving me out of the conversation. Fuck you, f whispering about. She puts extra stress onto that word, expecting it will make you uncomfortable. There you go. So that's where the slurs come from when I was expecting one. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. Okay. <laughs> We're doing it. We're connecting with the troubled youth. This is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Don't make Kuno look bad. Okay. She's trying to control you. We got to get you out of here. What's up with her? She's terrifying, crazy, scary. Am I glad she's out of our hair? She's fucked up. Okay. We can still fuck this up. I'm going to go with option one. She's trying to control you, Kuno. Listen to me. We've got to get you out of here. It's okay. The pig's trying to pit us against each other. Not going to let him do that. Idiot. You bungled it up. That's it. You let him off the line. That was a bad, manipulative thing to say. You should understand. I got you this far. I couldn't get you all the way. All of them are low-key manipulative with how we went with that. Try to fuck my Kuno! <laughs> Try to fuck my Kuno away! Me and Kuno are tight! We vibe for life! Any of those options feel like it could have had that outcome, though, because as soon as we, like, it was either we say she's controlling you, or there's also saying, like, she's fucking terrifying. It feels like they would all lead to the same outcome. But we got a we got a success. A chill comes over you, the wind from the boulevard south, lashing you for trying to separate them, for trying to take the street out of Kuno. <laughs> okay, we could do it again. Try once more to figure him out. Find a way to connect with him. It feels like it, it genuinely feels like those three options may have had the same outcome because it circles around to trying once more to figure him out. You were too pushy last time. Think this through. Okay. Try to really understand the psychological bond Kuno has with Kuno S. Okay. Connect with the youth. Get into their little cursed little brains. What's the deal with Kuno S? Just look. While Kuno has no problem being near you, she came up with that psychopathic scheme of all in all. Kuno respects madness. Okay. Fuck you whispering about. We're back again. Here we are. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But Fuck you, f All right, we're back. She puts we're back. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. This is it. You've got him. Okay. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Now. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. All right, I'm going to ask what's up with her. That was the second option that I was going to choose anyway, because another one saying, I'm glad she's out of her hair, she's fucked up, might push him in a different direction. What's up with her? She's terrifying. Crazy scary. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Yeah, we'll see. That could be Kuno S running her mouth and trying to impress you, though. It's just kids saying shit. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell ya? Kuno told ya! Kuno talks to whoever he wants! It's working. Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. We're, it's, we're getting there, it's working! 
You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. Yes. Fuck. She can read lips. You should cup your mouth. Okay, here we go. We've got multiple questions. Let's go through let's go through them all. What do you mean she smoked someone? Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like actually a killer. His little green eyes are fixed on yours. He's meant everything he said before, but right now he not only means it, he is sincere. You serious about this killing business? Killing is serious shit. Kuno's always serious about the 488. 488. The criminal code doesn't go higher than 190. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Come on, she hasn't killed police officers. I knew you pigs were too naive for this shit. Good thing Kuno's got her under control. Kuno keeps her calm. He feels eyes on the back of his head and stops. A cop would be too large for her to overpower, but a determined child of her size can still kill the vulnerable, the elderly, the homeless, or other, other children. The creature peers at you both <laughs> from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. The creature. Kuno, do you think it's possible that she's killed other children? Kuno falls silent. He does not look at you when he replies. Hmm. Kuno, there, that's it. That's what Kuno is starting to think, yeah? He usually looks you straight in the eye. A little something just crumbled there. We're piercing through this man's steel shell. Don't move your head. Just from the corner of your eye, look at her. I'm going to look at her. Though her friend spoke too low for her to hear, Kuno S is not smiling anymore. Piercing Kuno, getting into that mentality, that brain of his, while also breaking Kuno S. You think she has anything to do with the dead man? Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Where were you? Look, Kuno's going to put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. Thank you. You said she's insane. Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Cat burn and shit. She does the real deal. What's the real deal? Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. He doesn't want to think about it. This isn't just another boast. What's that language she uses? Fuck knows. She says it's the song of air people or some shit. What people? Crazy people. The fucking knackies. I don't know. Kuno S part of the skulls? Sounds boreal. Like something from the tundra and tiger covered cutler, Isola. Far, far away from here. As far as possible, really. Do they have red-haired people there? You mean evil little red-haired people like her? Yes, they do. The Suruese have that ginger gene. Kuno, could she be Suruese? Suruese? Like that man from Shelmdol shit? She could be. She could be that Shelmdol shit? Revelshaw does have a small Suruese community. Or she climbed into a yakberry crate <laughs> and shipped over accidentally. Is she your sister? Fuck no, she's not my sister. She's just a stray who got in. Like a mad dog or some shit. Stray? Yeah, she was just there. He points at the apartment building behind the fence. What was that, Kuno? The little one twists her neck, looking at the building. She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. I don't know if we'll have a chance to ask both of these questions. That hallway there with the janitor's closet. Yeah, that's the place. She was just balled up near the closet, psycho style. Why was she dripping wet? 
Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. You know this. The body goes into a kind of revulsion shock. Murder hangover. That's what it could have been. Fuck. Murder, murder hangover from when she... Killed a kid, yes. Makes them look for a quiet, dark place and just hibernate there. Usually goes on for a few days, up to a week. Hmm. Must have been her first one. You only get it on the first one. You said she got in. How? I don't know. Someone left the door open. Kuno comes home. She's sleeping under the desk, under the pile of clothes, like a dog. Okay. What about your parents? Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit. Doesn't even see her there. Or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno? Kuno S? Two of a kind. Why is she called Kuno S then? Because she fucking looks like Kuno. <laughs> you don't know her name. No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. Fuck, okay. I did not expect this route out of this. How are you dealing with all of this? How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. You need backup. I'm here for you. Listen, listen. C is Kuno's go-to. Kuno's protecting her. You fuck with C. You fuck with Kuno. You threaten her. You threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to. He needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you. I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later, and fuck you up. You understand? The boy looks you in the eye. Black people's trying to focus. He needs you to take him seriously. I can respect that. All right. Now we can do business. He's breathing heavily. That took something out of him. Okay. Business. Yeah? What do you want? Kuno can hook you up with... He starts no longer whispering. Oh, don't hook him up with shit, Kuno! See? Relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics <laughs> if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style. Pig <laughs> cooker. Oh my god. Is this how we're gonna get our speed instead of buying it from the drunks? That's right. Kuno's a candy store for pigs now. Get ready to be rewarded. He concludes, spreading his hands like a baker presenting a selection of freshly baked pastries. What was that about running an errand and illegal narcotics, Kuno? Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Hmm. So I wonder if Kuno's dad is tied to the drug trade as well that could be taking place at the moment. Problem is... Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Okay. Okay. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Fucking Kuno's asking me to get into a fisticuffs with his dad. Who's chalked up on steroids and speed. Who is your dad, Kuno? Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks, too. How much material are we talking about? Like half. Half of what? A baggie. But, like, in this vial. But that's not very much material at all. Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it, because there's barely any. <laughs> I've made up my mind, Kuno, and this is what's going to happen. Okay. Kuno's listening. He 
Interesting. Going in there, all guns ba blazing to get that speed because I need it. I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going after the most violent man in Revishol. Going in there for justice. I'm a narc. I'm going to confiscate it. And then the same, but with a lie. I feel like that might be... I wonder if that's being tied into one of these options. How do we know he's the most violent man in Revishol? Just taking Kuno's word for it? I wouldn't really trust Kuno's word for anything. I'm gonna go with this one. I'm going in there, but not for the speed. I'm going after the most violent man in Revishol. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that ship back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. <laughs> he aggressively points at his eyes. Go to room 12, first floor, and kick down the door. Police violence style. Kuno style. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. Split a kilo with Kuno. What the hell are you signing us up for here? I'm gonna go kill Kuno's dad. Come on, Kim. Obviously, I'm not going to take it. We need to get drugs away from a miner. Okay, then. He concedes. Nice. Hmm. Interesting. We still have these to pursue. Kuno doesn't fucking care. And Kuno doesn't care if we still have those things to pursue. So, take down Kuno's dad is optional. Who knows what its secrets will lead to. All right, while we're here, let's quickly go and check out this shack because we were told to go and check out the shack and it might have some bugs. That was an interesting, interesting um, pathway that we just took there. It's crawling with locusts in here. All around you. The hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Okay. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. <laughs> the lieutenant looks around, writes something in his notebook and turns to you. Of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Stop being so sarcastic, Kim. Oh, I'm not being sarcastic at all. We are making real progress here. When someone says they're not being sarcastic, it's usually a good sign that they're being very sarcastic. You think the Insulindian Phasmid is nearby? If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. The Phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The Phasmid doesn't exist. But what do I know? What do you know, Kim? Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The Phasmid is impairing your judgment. We should talk to Kuno about this. Get him to stop. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. I'm doing wonderfully. Alright. Well, that's what that noise is. That solves that mystery. Alright. Let us talk to Kuno once more. Because we can't get enough of this man. Fuck, does Kuno care? I know you took the locusts from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah. Kuno took the bugs. So what? Why the fuck would Kuno go all the way over there for bugs? What's the motive? So it wasn't a phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. You say you don't give a fuck about bugs, but then you go and build a whole bug town. It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. <laughs> locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Yeah, they're terrifying. Stop! She wails from behind the fence, then buries her face in her hands. Locusts coming down like a shadow. This must be the night city he mentioned when you asked him where he's been. So that, in there, is Night City. Yeah, local city. City of rage. City of lights. 
there's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. I'm so in love with the, my art cop degree. Having my conceptualization chime in with 10 XP is just so rewarding. Free serotonin to my brain. Every time I see it, I'm just like, mm, the sound effect is so satisfying. Warm honey pouring over my brain. The girl forces herself to watch again. <laughs> the corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. City of Rage sounds like a cool place. Kuno, the pig wants to help you. Oh, that's how lame it is. Please just don't say you're an artist. Maybe I am an artist. You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking <coughs> artist now. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. Making art is a worthy calling. I'm something of an artist myself. I'm going to say number one first. Hold on. Did I hear you right? You said I. Kuno made Kuno. Kuno says whatever the fuck he wants. There are no rules here, pig. He steps closer. I fucking say I when I wanna. And Kuno when I wanna. Kuno's free. Kuno's free to fucking die, bitch. <laughs> this is what he sometimes does when things get tense. Making art is a worthy calling. I'm something of an artist myself. Oh my god, Kuno. He's gonna make you totally lame in, like, three seconds. Oh, don't let him, Kuno. Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. <laughs> he tears at the buttons of his shirt, trying to rip them open. They don't give way. <laughs> Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno's just everything and anything all at once. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. You'll have to take me away. A leaden silence fills the yard. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. So that's what this is about. Mm. That depends on the choices you make, young girl. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. You got him. Now convince him to leave the cryptozoologist's traps alone. Okay. Okay. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. Those locusts are bait. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. She was right. The girl's face appears again above the fence just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. I have to ask, what does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. He turns his face up to the heavens. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. What's going to happen to the locusts? Kuno's gonna let the fucking locusts die. Okay, now that that's settled, I'd better be off. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The Insulindian Phasmid. Huh. Huh. He recognizes the name. Ooh. Wait, you know what the Insulindian Phasmid is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. <laughs> There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other nor looking in each other's direction. I have torn them apart. As it should be. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Take one step closer. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. I just want to ask you some questions. Take another step closer. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What a good poker face. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? What are those strange words you use, girl? I come from the woods, good da vitu. 
You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I've seen. Don't be traumatizing here. Get the fuck out of here. Hmm. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Child, converse with me. Murder was the case, was the case they gave me. She has almost vanished behind the fence. Only the top of her hat remains. Okay. Kuno's gonna have a fucking heart attack? Alright, well, we've, we've done what we came here to do, which is to convince him to leave the locusts alone. <laughs> Kuno has promised to stop. Report your findings to the cryptozoologists. And uh, we still have not fixed that issue with the audio stuttering, unfortunately. It's still happening. There must have been an update to the game recently that has messed with things, because I've reinstalled it and verified the integrity of the game files, and it's still a really annoying audio bug that wasn't there before, but it's there now. Gary's gone. So when it said last chance to talk to Gary, it literally meant it in that one instance. He's out. But that's okay, because we got the armor from him, and I don't think there was anything else to be obtained there. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. I had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. So it was just a child. He purses his lips, crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid, or the missing locusts. It's something else. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> the aging cryptozoologist breaks into a hideous coughing fit. He has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. This man needs to chill. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. I'm really feeling this is costing me time on my main investigation. It's not worth risking your health. You should call it a day and go home. Refuse? I'd offer to help, but I have my own things to do. Refuse. Maybe I can still restock the trap for you, except we've come too far to quit. I'm going to restock the trap. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Um, we need this guy to chill out. Otherwise, I feel like he's going to fucking die. So I'm going to help him out because we have come too far to quit. I'm going to restock the trap. Let's do this. Except enthusiastically. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... Exactly, Kim. He wants to see this tale through as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. So Kim does have an investment. He just tries to guard it under sarcasm. Well, he missed out on some great stuff yesterday. Really? It's too much, officer. He starts coughing again. <laughs> what morale means is we're grateful for your help. Well, I'm happy to do it, because I don't want this guy to end up coughing and falling dead on the ground, okay? We've already got one dead body that we're dealing with. We don't need another. Here's a fresh trap to blow. I should slide right down the funnel. Well, thank you again. We will definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... That Lucas sound effect was so long-winded and loud in my ears. It was so unnecessary. That's like the opposite of the good sound effect when I get a conceptualization XP. That was like nails in my ears, slowly, but surely entering one at a time. Just, yeah. Wow. Co-discovery. You'd be famous. You'd show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. That tingles the pleasure center. The, the sound effects? No. All right. Looks like we've got more. Find the Insulindian Phasmid. First, restock the trap you left empty before. The trick is to remember which one it was. Oh, well, that's fine. I know which one it was, so that's great. Um, items. Box with locusts. We could just sell it. 
Imagine just selling it immediately. Fuck, that would be cruel. A cardboard box with several rows of little holes in the lid. Though at first glance, the box seems perfectly ordinary. Upon closer examination, it's obvious it has been prepared with great care. All right. Hate to break it to you, Gary, but rhinos don't just combust in flames, he says, to an invisible Gary that does not exist in this room anymore. All right, I'm going to go and restock that trap. And this will be a good opportunity for me to take a little bit of a toilet break. Uh, we'll restock the trap, and then we'll come back to Morel um, and see what happens. Ooh, there are people here. New people during the day. Good to know. The trap stands empty near the reeds. No insect sounds or movement around. Only the reeds' apprehensive hissing. Release the locusts into the empty trap. The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. Okay. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. Good. Now that's done. When do you think we will return to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? Oh, you know. Don't answer that. It was a rhetorical question. Okay. All the traps are stopped now. And still, no sight of the phasmid. Return to Morel and let him know. Okay. That is done. While I'm over here, perhaps I should speak to this... Uh, couple. This kid and a parent. Oh yeah, because it's this sign. And Mikhail noticed the windows. Especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. A blonde man stands next to his son, pointing to the weather-worn ruins. He sees you approaching and smiles. Trant Heidelstam. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Trant Heidelstam. You must be Kim Kitaragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. He literally recognizes and knows who Kim is. He's just like, you must be Kim, right? Jesus. He's like instantly just going, you're that guy. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you and Kim know each other. There you go. Hold on. Hypertext? Yes, hypertext. Young Carp and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. Wait, what was that about the windows before? This is good because this might help us get a better, better look on this when we investigate it. Oh, yes. So, Mikhail, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then. That was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. Hmm. You and Kim know each other? No, I can't say that we've met before. But I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. The child stays hidden behind the hem of his father's coat, clutching to his worm-themed coloring book. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. We're trying to figure out a radio computer at some point as well. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, <laughs> or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. He points to the building again. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? <laughs> well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis. A cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. And then immediately we go, you look like someone who has money. God damn it, Harry. What's so fascinating about an empty old building? Plenty. I love abandoned buildings. I'm really, I'm really big on, I like the, I'm, I really like abandoned places and also the photography that captures that stuff. I used to obsessively just like love watching videos or seeing like photography related to abandoned places or exploring it so when harry's like what's so fascinating about an empty old building i'm like boy oh boy let me tell you it's amazing to see that kind of stuff and visualize the amount of history in those places um like uh one of the biggest examples of that is seeing the uh abandoned buildings and surroundings of chernobyl like it's so cool to 
uh, and haunting to see that stuff. And I'll also give a quick shout out to how amazingly well done HBO's Chernobyl was because of that as well. It was amazing. What's so fascinating about an empty old building? Harry asks. Aha, but it's not just any empty old building. He raises his hands to his eyes, springtime sun warming his handsome face. All four of you turn to admire the mural before you. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. Hold on, what's R&D? Research and development. Wait, what's an R&D department? Apologies, it's an acronym for research and development. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. He smiles brightly, laugh lines around his eyes. Which is, you know... Um, it's the word that I'm looking for, which is painted very well in the portrait. You're probably more familiar with RTD. Research and Technological Development. Ah. Maya Kalpa, you are not familiar with that one either. This man is a bookhead. I don't think I've ever heard of this Feld Electrical. Oh, hang on. Look at the building looming over you. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferro tape manufacturer remains. He adjusts his suit jacket. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say they were developing an ace up their sleeve? <laughs> I'm mixing my metaphors here. What was that ace? It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. A tape computer? Mm hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferro tape ribbons, portable enough to be a take it home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer, which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN, and Zam, haven't achieved yet. <laughs> He grins, admiring the sentence he just produced. He assumes something like a combat stance, facing the wind. What happened? Indeed. What? The revolution! Oh. There we go, Mikhail. The boy wipes his nose on his sleeve. <laughs> the revolution! Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. He pauses, pointing to the other building, then continues. All of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt built this side of town for R&D. You're saying that Feld Electrical built this boardwalk? Look under your feet. Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? The lieutenant looks wistfully at the horizon, as if picturing gondolas rising to the sky. Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. Hmm. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before Feld arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. Feld is the reason all those phasmids are gone and we can't find them. What happened to the engineers, the company people? Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers mm. he means that the boys got shot by the communists the boys were bourgeois mm. I'm not gonna do that one hey kid it means they got shot in the head tape computers right tape computers 
He nods, wins tousling his suit jacket. What did the revolutionaries do with those advanced tape computers? They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases. The most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What was that? What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. Hmm. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shawl on her political concept album, Bon Bessier dans le Lint. You should read it. Every local library in River Shawl stocks a copy of the decree. Of the decree? I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. <laughs> The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of the book, already forgetting about this part of the discussion. How did those tape computers work? Did they work like radio computers? Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. He raises his finger, remembering something. Buckle up. Buckle up! Ten years ago, I did a little freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womty Domty Dom Center in Vedefort, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Womty Domty Dom Center? <laughs> yes, he did. He did it. He said... Wompty Dompty Dom Center, like it's the most natural thing in the world. I know. What the hell is a Wompty <laughs> Dompty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Juiced? Okay, the Wompty Dompty Dom Center, Paul Ockerman, Keith and Guy Juiced, what are you talking about? The Wompty Dompty Dom Center for Contemporary Arts. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ockerman, chose to... I don't know, I kind of believe him, but apparently both of these we need uh, are tying to being fake. You're making this up, tends Lieutenant Kim. Is he making this up? In fact, I'm not. The Womty Domty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredefort and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> okay, he clears his throat. But perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Hmm. Cool. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Wait, the felt playback experiment? Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources report it as the felt playback experience, but those are incorrect. Why did the revolutionaries destroy it? Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that building. He takes a step back. The boardwalk creaks mournfully in the wind. I wanted to ask something else. But of course. <laughs> what else? Okay. Uh, it says I want to hear about the Feld building again, but I feel like that'll just go to the same... Sure. Yes. What's on your mind? But of course. So now we can go as, you look like money has money. Do you have money? <clears throat> I'm just going to say, thank, great, thank you for all the interesting information. I have money too now. I don't need to... I don't need to ask for money. I'm a rich man with a lot of tear to put into the machine. No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikhail here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Nice. Pick your brain? If anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. 
You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R and D. I feel like this is because I interacted with something while it was saving. I think I think it's okay. A slogan used to intertwine it's okay. with the loops a long time ago. Now only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, "Tomorrow is just a whisper away." Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. The lieutenant raises the collar of his bomber jacket because he's cool like that. Turn away. Okay, I think this was a this is a different um, section to what I was thinking of as well in terms of needing to investigate it because this is not the one that was ridden with bullet holes. I think that's a little lower down. That's like this one over here. So I've got to run all the way around. Why are you walking? Why are you walking and not sprinting? Thank you. I'm going to quickly check this wall again. Now that we're here with... Um, Kim? Let's have a look at this wall. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Okay. There you go. So, visual calculus, we know about failed electrical, so we did learn some more uh, uh, to help with this wall. But however, visual calculus needs to be improved. Uh, our visual calculus doesn't have anything on it right now, but if I put on this commander's jacket, that's one. Uh, visual calculus. What else we got that's visually calculating? I'm pretty sure we have something else. That's a minus one. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Apparently only the jacket. A scattering of bullet holes. Fifty-eight percent. Cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Why this many bullet holes? Yeah. A row of ghosts Hell yeah. stand facing the wall. There we go. There are many of them. A dozen at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet. No sound. No movement. This is exactly what we knew it would be. It's a firing line. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. The morning sun rises beyond the horizon, radiating the first light of the day. The order was carried out at dawn. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Look at the people against the wall. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, Ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting. A common practice for executions in some nations. As demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand. Facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people. Familiar. Each and every one of them. Who were they? Comrades. The forsaken. The wretched who tried to rise against the horrors of the world. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Look at the person standing on the side. The Commandant, the one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists 
put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said about Feld? What if it was the Feld personnel when their assets were being seized by the revolutionaries? And here you go, here's another thing, is we could have still got a success on this check before, but without this information from Trent, therefore limiting the full con uh, conversation that we can have here. Another likely scenario. Or maybe. You mentioned coalition forces. Could it have been them against the wall? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. Hmm. That's what I thought. I want to get a screenshot of this real quick. There we go. Just gonna get a screenshot of that one real quick. Save that one for later. Because a very interesting, visually stimulating image. Goodbye. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Wow. Okay. A row of ghostly shades facing the crumbling wall. Oh, it comes back. With another seven shades standing ten meters from them. Okay. A cold sea. So you can actually recheck it later if you want. There you go. All right, well, we were able to successfully check that wall. Let's move on. Even though I have it on to automatically run, <laughs> when I click further away, he's like, no, Harry's like, no, we'll just, we'll just walk. We'll just walk. No rush. All right. Um, I'm going to head back to, now that we've set the trap again, our final order of business for this episode is I'm going to head back to Morel and let him know that we have done so and see what happens after that. So we're about to go back into the whirling and I would like to point out the fact that I'm missing my fingerless gloves. I have my gardening gloves and my phone gloves but I don't have my fingerless gloves anymore. And there's just a random empty square here as well. Is there a limit to the amount of clothes? Because look, there's like empty squares. Is there a limit to the amount of clothes that we can carry? And then if we start getting more clothes, it like removes clothing? That, fe that feels wrong, right? Even though, like... That feels like that would be... A terrible thing. So it seems that there are white squares that like you can fill up your inventory. Is there a maximum amount of clothes that you can have? And you don't get to choose which ends up get getting like removed from your inventory. I don't have fingerless gloves anymore. I didn't choose to remove them. I don't remember getting rid of them either. I remember getting rid of our beanie to a cell and that's it. Can we store clothes somewhere? Because otherwise that's concerning, because then I can just, then I can run out of clothing. I don't know about that. No, there you go, okay. So if I unequip something, it opens up a new, a whole new thing, that's fine. So there isn't a, a, a limit. However, it opens up a mystery. Where the fuck are my fingerless gloves? <laughs> Where are my fingerless gloves gone? I had fingerless gloves. I didn't give them away. Oh shit, what's happened to Morel? Hello, dear. It's good to see a familiar face. I restocked the empty trap. Where's Morel? Hopefully he's just lying down. Is he alright? Thank you for doing that, dear. She manages a smile for you. Her smile is weary. Her earlier ebullience has left her. Mm, what's happened to Morel? Morel still isn't feeling well. I convinced him to stay at Gary's to get some rest. Okay. I'm afraid the cold has really gotten to him. It's probably for the best. It's awfully cold out there in those reeds. I'm sorry, dear. You've had to drudge through them so many times. Such as field work. A young person's game, as they say. Are we able to assist him? I'm going to head over to Gary's place. Her voice is shaky. What is going on here? So, who's going to check the traps? Morel will eventually, or we'll talk Gary into going back out, perhaps. The lieutenant stares at his shoe. 
caked in mud. He doesn't say anything. So we can say we'll take care of it, take it on, or once more onto the breach then. Take it on with undue optimism. I'm going to make sure that I can... I want to battle their sadness with optimism to lift their spirits. Okay? Once more onto the breach then. That really is too much, sweetie. Thank you for your dedication, but I can see you're coming down with a cough yourself. No, I'm chill. Very strange. Why is she not letting you do this? It's like she's given up. Lena, what's wrong? You seem different. Different? How? The half moons of her glasses reflect to you as she looks up to you. You've given up on the phasmid. I'm in doubt, sweetie. That's all. Everyone is now and then. You're in doubt? About what? It's a... a strange feeling. I haven't really told this to anyone, but you are a police officer. Do you ever wonder if some lovely story from your childhood is just that? A story or a dream? Hunching her shoulders now, she seems even smaller than she is, like a sad young girl. Seeing the Insulindian Phasmid was just a story I used to tell people. I didn't really think about whether it was real or not. But Morel told me you'd seen it. You also told me. Morel's so proud of it. He always tells everyone. A terrible sting in the heart. Regret. Oh no. You saying you made it up. What if she made up that story when uh, to impress the man that she was on a date with and then it became their whole life from that point onwards and she's been living with this her whole life? Are you saying you made it up? No, at least I don't think I did, but Morel oh. was so eager to believe my story was evidence of the Phasmid's existence that I'm some queen of the cryptozoologists. That... And for years, his belief made me believe, too. Man, this is sad. That I am a queen? An extraordinary witness to grace. But now, we're both getting old, and he's still working himself sick out in those reeds looking for it. But what if I was just wrong? I think I was. The lieutenant opens his notebook, but doesn't write anything. Okay, 72% suggestion. It's a red check. Oh, I can't, I can't back off to up my suggestion. I'm so scared about this 72% because it's a red check, but it's 72%. We've been on a good luck streak. We've been on some good checks, but 72%. Ah! Okay. Not the same as the truth. Oh. That requires time, diligence, and care. Okay. There we go. I was so, I was actually worried that we'd still we'd, we're on a roll, baby. And when you roll, sometimes you come to a stop. But it's not this day. Undue optimism. An acorn is not the same as the tree. That requires time, diligence, and care. And I need something good here. All qualities. These two seem to share in abundance. Wrong or not, your relationship with Morel isn't just about the phasmid. But it is. We've spent years searching for the phasmid, hunting it together. Without it, what are we? Just another pathetic old couple. If I hadn't led him down this path, he could have a steady job lecturing at a university. Morel hated lecturing. You convinced him to do something real in this world. But if the dream comes to naught, what good is it? No, the thing is... She looks down at her legs. I was a paraplegic before we met. He didn't know before I arrived. On our first date. 
If I weren't the queen of the cryptozoologists, if I didn't tell him that story... She has to swallow to relax her throat. It's keeping her from talking. He'd still be into you. That's not how these things work. Maybe. But then why do I not dare tell him? I I've wasted enough of your time with this drama. I really must stop talking about it lest I start crying and waste more of your time. What you have to know is the Insul Indian Fasmid probably does not exist. Let us fools chase our ghosts. There are a million better things to do with your life. Are there? Some of the other things are pretty bad. Bruh, this is heavy. <laughs> to hell with this. I still believe you saw the Phasmid. A true believer. Sometimes I still see it too. The real memory of it. How it was there. Not the memory of the memory, but it's so hard to tell the two apart. Rising. Unfolding from the reeds on a hot summer's day. Like a benevolent god. Either way, I should go. Poor Morel is running a fever and I need to get him home to Jamrock before we overstay our welcome with Gary. Are you sure you don't need help getting to Gary's? Oh no, thank you, but I can get there on my own. This old thing is gas-powered. <laughs> and then a taxi home. It's not so bad. Okay. You do that. I'll check the traps one more time. Really? Yes, Kim. It's the least I could do. Oh, sweetie. Please don't get stuck on a dream. Take it from me and Morel. Can I have your address? Just in case there's news. Okay, it's 1113 Tabernacle Road, Jamrock, but... I'm holding, I'm holding on to it, okay? Just in case. A sigh. She doesn't think you'll need it. Okay. It's been a pleasure, ma'am. Likewise, sweetie. Thank you for everything. Truly. Even though it turned out to be a... A waste of time. Hmm. A dream. A fool's hope, say her lips moving in silence. Like that, she drives off. The gas engine enters quietly as she gets to the doors. Quietly? Then pushes them open. Outside, it's snowing. I was not quiet. We should go to... Dude, this is like unexpectedly fucking miserable <laughs> at the end there. Damn. This really is testament to some really fucking incredible writing. Um, that these these relationships, these characters, these people uh, feel so real that they are real. It's <laughs> just like the phasmids are real. The characters in this game are real. It's it's crazy. Uh, how realistic a lot of this uh, is and, and, and feels. It's so well realized down to a conversation with an interaction about people, uh, you know, and their relationships and how it's all tied up in what could be a complete falsehood or maybe not. Who knows? Because it's not proven. And if we don't prove it, who else is going to do it? And then it starts questioning the the basis and the foundations of their entire relationship, where it's like, we're only together because of this thing, and we don't know if we would be together without this thing. There's no way of saying that for sure. Damn. And we end this episode on a pretty sad and melancholy note about relationships and what-ifs. And maybe we'll check the maybe we'll check the traps one last time. You know, um, it's it's not on it's not on the list. Uh, it's not on the list to do anymore. It does say that it is a completed task, but maybe I'll go and check them. You know, we have taken note of the we have taken note of the address. Um, 
just to see. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Disco Elysium. We'll bring this one to a close, and next time we continue with day four. There's plenty to do and plenty to check out. So it's been a, uh, a big arc of cryptozoology for a time. Uh, we'll move on and potentially interview uh, our victim uh, next time after we had a lot of cryptozoology to do. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time.